going on guys and welcome back to another flashlight video review. I know it's been a while since I've uploaded a video and that's because I've been bogged down with school mainly and I've kind of wanted to focus on my academics. Anyways, in this video I'm going to be showcasing the Nucleus flashlight. This is a flashlight that is generally regarded as the smallest in the custom flashlight world. These were made a couple of years ago back in 2016 by George Kamenez, but I only had a chance to pick one up quite recently. And I have to admit, I've had quite a few small flashlights, but damn, this thing is small and it blows everything out of the water. Um, with respect to my expectations. All right, so the Nucleus arrived in a cute little jewelry box, as you can see here, and it also has a image of a Nucleus, essentially. So yeah, very nice presentation, and personally, I think the jewelry box was an app choice considering just how small this flashlight is. And it is sort of jewelry in a sense, flashlight jewelry, that is. As well as the jewelry box, it also came with some written instructions here. These are just basic maintenance and um, care instructions and disassembly instructions but um, they're nice to have nonetheless. I keep saying how small the Nucleus is, so let's talk actual specs. The Nucleus comes in at 26.4 millimeters by 9.44 millimeters, and as a result, it has a total volume of 1846.79 millimeters cubed. So to put this into perspective, you could fit four of these little guys on a standard US penny. And I'll throw up a picture on top, just so you guys have a better idea. I think there is one online of that, so I'll throw that over just in case. My particular nucleus is made out of grade 5 titanium, although there were many other exotic metals offered. Once again, I'll throw up a picture on top so you guys just have an idea of just how many exotic metals were offered and just how desirable they were. All nucleus flashlights feature a Nichia 219B 4000K N millimeter. As you can see there, it's a bit hard to pick up on camera. Um, and they run off of three Maxell SR41W batteries. And these are the batteries that it runs off of. It takes three of these. These are very, very small batteries, and I believe they're generally used in calculators, something like that, I want to say. All right, so specs out of the way, let's talk about what I like. First off, it's pretty clear to me that no expense has been spared in the Nucleus's construction. I'm sure I've mentioned this before in another video, but just to reiterate, grade 5 titanium is substantially more difficult to machine and also much stronger than what is generally referred to as commercially pure grade 2 titanium. The Nucleus is also using a sapphire lens instead of a normal glass lens. It's indiscernible on camera, you're not going to be able to pick up the difference between a mineral glass lens and a sapphire lens, but a sapphire lens is a lot more scratch resistant as well as shatter resistant. And you'll also note that the lens is already pretty recessed, so it's going to be pretty hard to scratch or shatter a mineral glass lens, much less a sapphire one, but it's nice to know that this thing is very well protected nonetheless. Components aside, the construction of the flashlight itself is simply flawless. A good indication of quality, especially with titanium because it's a galling metal, are the threads. And the threads on the Nucleus are far and away the best that I've seen. As a basis of comparison, over here I have my Fellholter Tiny Bolt Pen. And I thought the threads on this pen were smooth for titanium, and they definitely are until I played with the Nucleus. But just to give you an idea of what smooth titanium threads are, listen to this. I, I hope the camera's picking it up at least. So yeah, definitely pretty smooth with titanium, but then listen to this. So yeah, these threads are far and away the best I've seen on a titanium flashlight, bar none. Something else that I want to point out is the finish on the titanium. So this is a B-blast finish, and I believe it is one of three, according to what George told me. So I'm pretty um, stoked to have the B-blast finish on this flashlight. And as you can see, it's consistent and smooth all around the flashlight, which is generally what you want to look for in a finish like a B-Blast on titanium. And this is my other George Kamenez flashlight called the Omicron. And you can see that the B-Blast has held up pretty well over the course of a year, although I have smacked this guy around quite a lot. And I've had this on my... This one was on my keychain, it was on my neck, and it's been to a lot of places and been smacked around a lot. So you know this finish holds up pretty well. A feature of this flashlight that's pretty cool is that it has a Nichia 219B LED. And this is unique in the sense that most flashlights around this size are using 3mm or 5mm LEDs. And as a result, you're getting really good color rendition and decent output, which those flashlights tend to lack. And this is a twisty, so you simply twist like that. And as you can see, the beam is mostly flood, but it still res retains something of a hotspot at short distances. And a floaty beam is optimal for a flashlight like this, especially because you're going to be using it for close-up work. This isn't a primary duty flashlight by any stretch of the imagination. Um, fun fact, this is also called a mule. So a mule, mule is a flashlight without an optic. I believe this term was coined by 
um, Don McLeish. A final feature that I really love about this flashlight and that you're not going to see on many other flashlights this small are tritium vials. So I'll zoom in here so you guys can tell. And yes, these tritium vials are tiny and it has five green tritium vials. I believe George had to custom order these from Mixglow. This Mixglow is generally the go-to source to get tritium vials. Anyways, um, I'll throw up a better picture on top because they're hard to capture on camera in light and you're only, they're only going to be visible at nighttime. I do think they add some flair to, to what is effectively flashlight jewelry and I can see them serving as a locator if you have the nucleus on your keychain. With that said, I am currently wearing mine around my neck. Previously, I was wearing the Omicron flashlight here. This one here around my neck. Um, this is George's second production design. The Omicron is definitely more utilitarian in the sense that it has more output and run times, but the Nucleus has the benefit of comfort and much, much smaller size. I'll throw up a picture on top if you guys can't tell already just how much smaller the Nucleus is. And bear in mind that this is already a very small flashlight. It is using a 10180 battery. Um, here's, a, here's a knife, bench made bug out. Um, just to give you guys an idea of how small this flashlight is, so yeah. I do have a review of the Omicron if you guys want to check it out. It's definitely more of a keychain flashlight than, than the Nucleus is, hence why I'm wearing this little guy on my neck now. Both the Nucleus and the Omicron flashlight are waterproof to at least 10 feet of water, and this is due to multiple O-ring seals used throughout the construction of the flashlights. And on the Nucleus alone, I want to say that there's five O-rings, which is absolutely absurd for something this small. Let me zoom in here. So if you guys can see here, this is actually one, two, three, four separate components. And these flashlights are completely disassemblable, although I would recommend against not doing it because the parts are just so tiny. And speaking anecdotally, I have personally taken these flashlights in the shower, swam with them, and gone to the gym with them on numerous occasions, so I can attest that they are indeed waterproof. A big benefit of titanium, and a reason why it is desirable in jewelry especially, is because it's hypoallergenic and it will also never rust. The metal forms an oxide layer the moment it hits air, so um, it would take thousands of years for um, titanium to rust in even salt water in just the slightest. All right, I think I've covered what's good about this flashlight. Let's talk about what's not so good. I want to mention beforehand that the things that I'm going to point out aren't bad so much as they're bad because of the consequence of severe size limitations. And first off is the battery choice. As I mentioned earlier, the nucleus runs off of three button cell batteries. And these things are tiny, and unfortunately, they also aren't rechargeable. To be fair, I don't think there's any commercially available rechargeable battery that would fit in something as small as the Nucleus. Um, to demonstrate just how fine the tolerances on this flashlight are, which is actually a good thing, there's actually a Delrin sleeve inside the body. And um, you can't even, I can't see at least, where the Delrin sleeves meets, meets the titanium, which just is a testament to how thin and how fine the tolerances are on this flashlight. George actually made me this Nucleus using some of the last parts he had left, so my Nucleus is using a pre-production Darwin sleeve. And basically what the Darwin sleeve does is it facilitates battery loading and makes it a lot easier to um, keep the Nucleus from activating inadvertently. And you can see here that the tolerances on this are so fine that the battery doesn't slide out because there's a pseudo vacuum that's created when the batteries are in there. And I actually have to use a magnet to get these out. Uh, so yeah. Pretty fine tolerances, pretty ridiculous. George told me that the difference between the pre-production sleeves and the production sleeves is like one one thousandth of an inch. So yeah, pretty insane stuff. The next con is that because of the battery type, extension runtimes and output aren't not the greatest either. And you get about 25 lumens for 10 minutes, and but in that time I think it drops to two lumens. But you do get two lumens for about another hour or so, so it's not that bad, honestly. And there's only one output level because there's no way you're gonna cram a driver into something this small. Um, this one here is actually programmable and it has multiple output levels and you can see that it's running a driver in here, which is pretty ridiculous already considering how small this flashlight is, but, um, yeah, so yeah, one output level and maybe about two hours of runtime, depending on how you use it. In practice, runtimes aren't really a big deal with a flashlight like this because you presumably won't be using this light for extended periods of time. The batteries should last for a good while and they're also relatively cheap to buy more from what I've seen online. The next thing I want to cover is sort of the middle ground, or just milieu. So I actually posted a picture of the Nucleus on Reddit the day I received it, and it got a ton of comments, actually. One of the most controversial comments was probably the one that made the argument that for 150 bucks, the Nucleus offers zero utility. First off, technically, this Nucleus cost a bit more than that when it was still in production, especially with the tritium vials. But while we did agree that the Nucleus is a bit of a curiosity amongst flashlights, I liked it more so to functional jewelry. And to this effect, I'm using this flashlight as a necklight. Uh, 
I run it on this chain. I should probably get a better chain. I'm looking into the steel flame chains, but uh, I don't know. I just don't want to drop that much on a silly ball chain necklace, but hey, what the heck. The Nucleus was never intended to be a primary flashlight, and it serves its purpose best as a backup, or even a backup to the backup, because we all know two is one and one is none, right? With respect to the cost, it almost goes without saying that the Nucleus is an exercise in fine machining and craftsmanship. It's easy to correlate weight and size with quality and cost, but all you need to do is take one look at most jewelry to know that this relationship does not exist at all. And I think that the Nucleus is well worth its price for the labor, creativity, and time that went into making it. That said, talking about the price is beating on a dead horse because these are no longer available for sale. Once George completes a design, that's it, and he moves on to the next design. And I watch the secondary market pretty frequently, and these rarely if ever come up, so you know that there are some very happy owners of Nucleus flashlights out there. Just saying. Going along those lines, and in conclusion, this flashlight is strictly in my not for sale part of the collection. Although it's not the flashlight I'm going to reach for if I'm going out and need to bring a primary light, it is a nice backup light to wear around my neck 24-7. Some of you might be questioning the veracity of this being the smallest flashlight in the world, and foremost, the Nucleus is definitely smaller than any production flashlight that I've seen on, say, Kickstarter that's advertising they have the world's smallest flashlight. The only other flashlight that's I've seen that might qualify as being smaller than the Nucleus is called the Firefly, and unfortunately this flashlight company went under many years ago, almost a decade ago I think, and the flashlight used a completely exposed 5mm LED. But it does bear saying that even the Firefly is technically not the smallest flashlight out there. The creator of the Nucleus, this flashlight here, George, actually made an even smaller flashlight that comes in at 516mm cubed. And he literally had to shave off parts of the LED to make it fit. Unfortunately, this flashlight is a one-off and George himself has said that he's not sure if he could ever replicate it. And that flashlight is unequivocally the smallest flashlight ever made though, and it makes the Nucleus look large. However, um, that's why I generally refer to this as the smallest um, flashlight in the custom flashlight world. As always guys, thanks for watching and be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you found this video review informative. Peace out.